All right, so like I want to get to the East Coast just real quick because I want to go through yeah. that, that top three because really we were talking about three dudes that could be number one in any other year, but like the two quarterbacks rank ahead of the defensive tackle, Brian Brzee, mm-hmm. six foot four, two ninety. I I mean, I heard Barton Simmons compared him to Dominican Sue. I didn't. I didn't see that. I saw more of a JJ Watt type of dude. But I mean, what do you see? I, I I'm with you, man. I, I see more of the the JJ Watt because I I look at Sue as more just kind of a, a run stuffer, not really a guy that's going to get. I mean, yeah, he does get pressure on the quarterback, but you look at a guy like JJ Watt, he does it all. You know, he's going to bat down passes, he's going to get sacks, he's going to stop the run, and that's what I see for C kind of being able to be. I mean, he's he's the highest rated defensive lineman that Clemson's ever had. He's what he finished number two, I believe, in the the overall three. poll for twenty four seven spot number three. Yeah. So Bryce and DJ are one and two. But right. I tell you what, man, him him and DJ same class. And then you look at the other guys Clemson's got on that D line. You got Demonte Capehart, Trey Williams. I mean, they're loaded up in the trenches. Miles man. Miles Murphy ends up there too, right? Man, yeah, they getting guys. <laughs> and there's still a couple guys that haven't committed yet that they're in play for. So. And they already got Corey Foreman, the, you know, the number one guy in 2021. Yeah, unpack so him right quick. Building. They, dude, that's insane what they're doing right now. With Clemson, LSU, Georgia, and then even Alabama, what those four programs are doing at the recruiting level, they're really making it unfair for the other schools that are, you know, trying to eat. No, I, I tell people this all the time when you talk about Clemson football, right? The way that you should be talking about Clemson football is as the new money at the table. And yet, when you look at their recruiting classes from – 2017, 2018, and then you jump a little bit further ahead, you can see, oh goodness, they are developing classes that aren't nearly as good as the ones that they're getting now. So they're going to be here for yeah. a long time, but they, everybody was worried about Central Florida. No, Clemson. Clemson is yep. the team for which you're, <laughs> is going to dismantle your favorite blue blood. You know, and what, I, I, I have this joke where I say, ask the, the regular college football fan where Clemson is. And they probably give you a blank stare. Be like, is this South Carolina? Where is South Carolina? Yeah, it's a trick question, isn't it? Because you're not supposed to be able to recruit dudes like that to that place. Yeah. And yet, and still, like, there ain't nothing in Clemson except you. And you got, like, we just went through it. So, in thinking about that, and then Corey Foreman, as you mentioned, he's decided to commit. I think he's the number one wide side defensive end. In the 2021 He's actually, I mean, it, it depends. If you're okay. looking at the composite rankings, Corey Foreman's the number one overall recruit in the class. So, I mean, he's 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 a freak, man. He's he's. I mean, if you want an easy comp, it's Chase Young. I mean, that's Yeesh. that's what his that's what his ceiling is, man. He's got the perfect body frame, athletic. You can't block him. You double team him. It still doesn't matter. He's going to make plays. He he's very similar to to Chase Young, and we saw what Chase Young did all season long. I mean, he's. He's nasty. And then you put them on with Percy and Trey Williams and Cape Hart and Murphy and all those dudes. Like, who are you going to double team? Nobody. No, no, Nobody. Actually, my, my best friend uh, brought this point up to me. He says, Brzee went to Clemson because he knows he's going to get guaranteed man on man. He's, he's not going to get yep. double teamed. And I was like, that's a very good point. That's a great take. Yes, of course you're going to go to Clemson. You know that everybody else is good enough to where they can beat them, so they're not going to double you. You're Why would you want to not be in that situation, right? On the on back here to the West Coast, right? So we we were geeking before taping about Noah Sewell, Justin Flo, Kayvon Oof. Thibodeau. Like, who's your Oof. favorite of those three? I gotta go Justin Flo, man. I've been okay. riding with this dude since his day started at Upland, man. He's I love the kid, dude. He's a dog. Like he he's out Baby there. Baby man. I'm not gonna say trying to hurt people, but he's he's out there trying to beast on Flo. He's so trying to hurt. Baby you know man he's trying to hurt he's people. Free. You know he's trying dude, to hurt people. You, you seen him that you seen the video <laughs> earlier this year against the Hobber dude. He straight up picked the dude and WW right. him Put right him on to his, the floor. Oh my god. I'm, he's a dog. Like I fell he, out laughing. <laughs> he dude, it's insane. Like it was so bad we couldn't even post it on Max Preps because it was it was just too Yo! bad. To on it. But he I wanted to, but you know like, Right. And, no. and, and then you throw in Noah Suell, like, oh my God. How many six foot two, two hundred and seventy pound inside linebackers are there? One. <laughs> right. It's like, There's what? one. What? And he's a true freshman. And his brother is even more of a beast. Probably the best offensive lineman in college football. Oh, man. There's, but I'm telling you, man, Oregon, I'm an SC guy, and I'm going to tune in to watch Oregon because of guys like Justin Flo. We saw what Kayvon Thibodeau did as a true freshman this year. What, he had 10 sacks, was the freshman defensive player of the year in the Pac-12. He's, he's special, man. He's not even close to – that was just all off talent. Now we starting to learn technique. 
what Oregon's doing, what Coach Cristobal is doing for the West Coast for football, he's he's building a program that's going to have them contending with the SEC powers and the Clemsons and, you know, the Ohio States, the Oklahomas of the world, where Oregon's going to be a factor in the 14 playoff race here for the next three to four, however long Crystal Ball's there, because his recruiting's up is just amazing. But he's putting the right people in the right places, too, when it comes to the coaching staff and just the strength and conditioning that they got. Oregon's they're building something, man. Uh, don't be surprised if they're in the playoffs next year. No, man, I'm, I wouldn't have been surprised this year, quite honestly. I mean, yeah. we're talking about an Auburn yeah, loss that Arizona keeps them State, out. State, they're probably in, you know? Right, right. I mean, you, you take the Arizona State loss back, you take the Auburn loss back where they led for all but like 13 Should've seconds. Won that game. Right, right. You know, and for me, it's is Tyler Child that good? Like, is he good enough? To, to you know not what screw the lucky thing is, is like he don't even got to be great. Like, hey, just go do your Jimmy G and manage the game and let the defense win and let's run the ball. Right. Like, let's do that. But he's got the tools, man. I think he's going to I think he's going to surprise some people for sure, because I think there were times where Herbert kind of, you know, he, he's got the the thing the scouts like in the NFL where he, he had all the measurements. Right. But I, sometimes it, I don't know if he was the guy. I think they're behind Shuff, and I think he's going to have a, a big-time year next season. Okay. All right. No, I'm, I'm with that because, like, anybody who's been paying attention to what Oregon's been doing over the last three years would have told you, you know, they, they're going to get it right and not only win a Pac-12 championship or or compete for the Pac-12 championship. They're, I mean, they won that Rose Bowl. Like, Wisconsin fans will say, no, we, we had penalties. Yeah, that's football. That's that's what happens. You get over yeah, exactly. You, you give the them the ball thing, back, man, they're going to beat the, you. It's, it's the same thing with the Ohio State Clemson game. Yeah, right. it probably was a fumble and Ohio State should got a touchdown, but at the end of the day, you don't win or lose plays on just one single play of the game, you know? Yeah, man. I mean, tell Chris Olave to keep running. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. No, so like I mentioned Sewell, but I mentioned him one because I wonder how the, are they going to let him play inside? Like, are yeah. they are they going to keep their word? Because I know one of the reasons that he ended up there is because he, he said, I'm a linebacker, let me play linebacker. But at the next level, that doesn't project, right? They're, they're going to ask you to move down. At the very least, you'll be an outside linebacker. But, I mean, if he gets as big as I think he might get, man, they might not have a choice. He's a five technique right now. Yeah. Well, I mean, look at look at the NBA, for example, like Zion Williamson, where we've never seen a guy that's 6'6", 285. But the things he does – isn't what your your prototypical 285-pounder can do. So I believe they're going to let Sewell have a chance and see what he does. And if he's not performing at what they think inside linebacker, then they'll find a new home for him. But, uh, you know, you just got to get that guy on the field. He's going to make plays no matter where he lines up. Right on. All right, so I'm going to ask you, who is your favorite non-quarterback in this 2020 class? Justin Flo's my guy. We yeah, just so talked that, about so, him. So that's I, it. I love I love me some Justin Flo, man. Okay. He a baby man's a dog, dude. I, I he does it like he played running back this year because they had a couple of guys go down. Well, he could do and that. And all he did is he ran for like seven hundred yards and over ten touchdowns this yeah, year. Yeah. And he, he could do that. Most times that the first guy tried to tackle him, he didn't end too well for that guy. But Justin Flo, man, he had over a hundred tackles, forced like ten fumbles, over ten sacks, and he's just a dog. And you you'd love to see that. In any level of football, but Justin Flo, that's that's my guy for sure. I'm a big Bajon Robinson fan too. Okay. I, I think all right. I think Texas has got a straight dog at running back. Man, he does it all. He's you know, he's he's arguably one of the best players ever to come from the state of Arizona. And they've had some good guys in high school football, but uh, Bajon, he's special, man. And then you got the dude, you know, going to Clemson too, Demarcus Bowman. He mm-hmm. he's he's a baller. And then I got love for my guy Kendall Milton too. So there we go. There's a feel. So like. That I'm glad you brought all those dudes up because I was going through this and, and, and none of those dudes are on my list, right? Even as yeah. they're outstanding players because I think about Keely Ringo at Saguaro. Yeah. And, oh, he's going to be nice. I mean, but like that size to be the kind of eraser that he could be because I'm thinking about Eric Gilbert, right? And yeah. and too. Right, six for five, 250. But yeah. watching those he, dudes battle would be... insane. I mean, he was a Gatorade player of the year for a reason, man. Mm-hmm. He helped... Dude, Marietta hasn't won a state title since the 60s. <laughs> so... I mean, he was a big part of that. You know, Harrison Bailey's super nice too. I don't think a lot of people talk about him enough. He's one of the best quarterbacks in this class. But uh, you think he's you a five a star? Dudes get the ball too, man. Eric Gilbert, Ricky White, and a bunch of other cats. I don't. You think Harrison Bailey's a five star? Yeah, he. I mean, he put up the numbers, man. He threw okay. like four, forty four hundred this year. Led him to a state title. Okay. What well, B-side Catholic it's in the Geico game? Okay. And they're loaded too with G Scott Jr. Man, they got some dogs. All right, I'm. A, I'm gonna let. I'm. A, 
I genuflect to the expert. Uh, let's move to 2021. We talked about Corey Foreman a little yeah. bit, but like mm-hmm. Brock Vandergriff, Caleb Williams, those are the two best quarterbacks in this class for you, right? Yeah. I, you know, I think you got to mention Sam Heward and, okay. uh, you know, Jake Garcia too. But yeah, okay. I got Caleb one, man, in my, in my eyes. I, I got Caleb. I like how it comes out of his hand, man. That's that's it. Like, I know that people look at him as dual threat and say, hey, he can move around. But, like, when the ball leaves his hand, I believe where it's going as opposed to not having to load up. It's not a long delivery. I mean, I have some I have some reservations about Brock's game as it goes forward. But I think there's things you can get fixed. I also think it's about the fit. And I'm really interested to see what Georgia looks like this year with Todd Munkin as the play caller. Because yeah. if you're just going to have that man handing the ball off to running backs, you, then what's he doing there? You know, whereas with Caleb Williams going, I mean, I think we're down to like LSU and Oklahoma at this point. But why oh, would make sense for Oklahoma, doesn't he? You would think so, but I, you know, I Brock Vandergriff made sense for Oklahoma, so I can't call it. Yeah, man. you know, like it, not, the the reason why I give Caleb a little nod over over Brock, and I love Brock's game, and he showed this year how tough he is, man. He played he played most of the season with a a, a broken fibula, dude, which is absolutely insane, but. Caleb's played against the best teams in high school football, and he's put on. I mean, he led Gonzaga to the WCAC championship during his sophomore year. And, you know, he had Gonzaga ranked in the top 25 mostly throughout his junior season, too. I mean, the WCAC is a top two, top three conference in high school football. And then on top of that, Gonzaga's played some of the best national teams. You know, they played Don Bosco Prep this year. Mm -hmm. They played American Heritage from Mm -hmm. South Florida. So, Caleb Williams is playing against the best competition and he's putting up these type of numbers where you look at Brock Vandergriff, they're playing in a lower classification in the state of Georgia where he's not playing the same level of competition. So I've seen Caleb Williams do this against the best talent and the best teams. I think he's going to be absolute stud at the next level. Also too, I got to give my shout out 2021 Ohio state commit comma court mm. from Philadelphia at St. Joe's prep, man. He's, he's, he's a baller too, for sure. You mentioned evaluating kiddos going against the best in the country versus not necessarily having that opportunity. And I always tell people when you're talking about being better than another player, five star versus four stars, you have to take that into account. So I'm glad you brought that point up.